Soccer Universe and welcome to the review of the Champions League. Boy, with all the misgivings that I've voiced about, uh, they always be kind of a little bit of a sameness to the, cha to the Champions League, blah, 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 blah. It's freaking brilliant. I even want to say I don't think that the Champions League has rarely or has ever been better than it has been over the past few years. Just the sheer level of excitement and how crazy the games are. And we only talk about the first leg, but what Manchester City and Real Madrid pulled off on Tuesday evening, mwah, chef's kiss, absolutely, absolutely great stuff. Yes, some question I was defending here and there, but I rather have that and a uh, 4-3 result than, you know, second game was a little bit more what one would expect, where one team hunkers down to not get killed all, all the way. And yeah, uh, you saw it in the title. Real Madrid is the nine lives team uh, that I've seen as of late. You really, I mean, City should have won this game by a whole lot. The chances were, were there to make it decisive. But this Real Madrid team, you need, you cannot kill once. You need to kill four, five, six, seven times, nine times, because they're never giving up. You need to make sure you dispose of them. See what PSG did, uh, see what Chelsea did, <laughs> and now uh, Manchester City almost following the same blueprint. But before I get into it, um, how do you like my uh, European semifinals background? I, I'm quite happy that I have of every team that is in the semifinals, I have a shirt and, you know, pulling them all up. Uh, this probably will stay kind of like this, you know, with a little bit shuffling around. Um, for uh, the remainder of my European videos, uh, just how the results go. But at the moment, home teams are kind of up for the first legs and then we'll switch it around for the away leg and then we'll see how it will go once the finals arrive. But yeah, um, I would say we'll start in Manchester. Big, I, an incredible game that, to be honest, um, I watched De Bruyne after two minutes after a brilliant Mares cross. And, and I mean, uh, the header also. Uh, Absolutely sensational. And then De Bruyne assists Gabriel Jesus and I'm thinking, okay, that tie is over. Boy, I have never been more wrong. I had the presence of mind. I mean, there was something else that I could have, would, I could have watched, not soccer related. But then I said, okay, uh, let's give it at least a half and then see where this is going. Uh, I really had, when Mares hit the outside of net, I really thought, yeah, Manchester City is going to decide this at the halftime. Boy, was well, I wrong. One Monday cross and Benzema has to make the most out of it, but just with a brilliant touch, makes it 2-1. And suddenly, it was really, I was on the couch, I was browsing for shirts, I was listening to a game, I was a little bit da-da-da-da, you know, whenever the voice raises you, uh, look over. And then suddenly that goal goes in and we have to watch. <laughs> it was literally at that point. And at that point, that suddenly Real Madrid was actually much better in the game as well, uh, which made it so much more exciting to have. Of course, Manchester City is a brilliant team. And I said, when Benzema made the goal, or Benzema, or Benzema uh, it should have been already, easily could have been 3 0 City. I mean, the first half hour, Real Madrid were not on, on, on the field. And especially, I. I mean, Alaba didn't look good, but he played with an injury. Uh, but I really thought that Eda Militao had a stinker of, of a game. And um, the other thing that really happened is that, um, you know, John Stones needed to come off for Man Man Manchester City, which also then, uh, with Fernandinho coming out, also kind of played a little bit in the, in, into the excitement of, of the game. These were not the best sides that these teams can pull out there. Errors will be made. Um, second half again, brilliant start from City, um, before Foden makes it 3-1, there is an absolute scorch of a chance, where again, Eda Militao is caught out really badly, Mares runs uh, through the goal, takes the shot, he hits the, hits the post, Foden takes the rebound, just, just reacts, and I think Carvajal then uh, clears it off the line, I mean, absolutely incredible scene right there, uh, then a little bit later, Foden after Fernandinho cross, Makes it 3-1. And then um, just a little bit after that goal, Tempest flared up where Guardiola then even had to get a yellow card. And I think that actually this little blip here, and we are talking only, bit, you know, a two-minute window here. Goal, 
there was uh, the kickoff, there was a little foul near the touch line where um, Guardiola was standing. A uh, lot of blah, 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 yellow card. Uh, play goes on. Suddenly, the Fernandinho is caught out of position with, with a brilliant move by Vinicius Jr. They're defending, uh, yeah. Um, Laporte also didn't look good because uh, he then stays with Bounce Amount, opens all the space for uh, Vinicius Jr. to just run from the halfway line towards goal and making it 3 2. And all my fears that again this game will be done and dusted were gone. Uh, and then actually, um, it kind of ebbed and flowed a little bit. It was really then a, a heavyweight battle with an advantage for City. But it needed another brilliant strike, um, where I think it was Kroos who fouled um, a City player uh, there, and you see the referee one, 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 one to whistle, but at that moment, Bernardo Silva takes the ball and uh, goes in into the box, and a brilliant shot on the near side in 4-2. Wonderful refereeing, I have to say the referee uh, did really, really, really well in, the, in this match. And I have to say, the 4-2, it felt at that, that, that moment. Uh, not only that it's a decisive blow, but also that uh, this is a just scoreline. City were two goals better than Real Madrid. No doubt, doubt about it. But of course, in order to keep the second leg, a little bit of excitement there, I was uh, hoping for like crazy for having another Real Madrid goal. And thankfully, uh, Laporte obliged, uh, put his hand out and the ball touched his hand there. Honestly, I think it was unlucky, but it's a clear penalty. Uh, it's given and then Benzema uh, with a Panenka style. 4-3. I really thought then, you know, when Raheem Sterling and so on came, came on that uh, City were probably pushing for the fifth. For a fifth goal in the Champions League semi-final. Uh, I think it's only the second time ever that two teams scored three goals in the Champions League semi-final. The other one being uh, Dinamo Kiev and Bayern Munich in 99, which was a brilliant game where Kiev was up 3-1 and Bayern came out of nowhere back in a way. But this is 4-3. A seven-goal semi-final. I mean, yes, we had it a few years ago when Liverpool beat Roma 5-2. Uh, but that was a completely different characteristic, although, uh, as I said, watching this game, it really felt like a City are the better team. And after the game, um, you just have to feel, you know that the Bernabeu is a place where Real Madrid takes an incredible amount of strength out of it. And so you really are wondering, I mean, City, shouldn't we have decided that a little bit, to, to rest a little bit easier going to Madrid? Of course, on the other side, um, Real Madrid will wonder uh, how we're gonna contain those guys. It's gonna be super, super, super in interesting. And I also wanna say that while I think Laporte and Eda Militao didn't look all that great, I think this was not a game of poor defending. It was of brilliant, fast-paced passing and quick-witted attacking. Uh, it was just a joy to watch and I cannot wait for the second leg. I also, I, I more and more get to the idea now that um, what used to be first legs, it was you usually a little bit cagey affairs because the home team, you know, uh, you don't want to get the away goal, blah, blah, blah. So it was, a, and, you know, you got a feel for each other and then the second legs were the ones that uh, went all out. It seems to have turned that the first legs, you can really go all out because you don't have to worry about the away goals really anymore. But then in the second leg, you're hanging on. Uh, still too, way too little data, but we gotta see how uh, this um, uh, goes, um, you know, in the upcoming years. And maybe, you know, the Copa Libertadores, they also have no away goals rule. Maybe this would also be interesting to uh, compare there. The second game, uh, that is... I mean, that one is probably a just result, and I even think there uh, it could have been more decisive. Liverpool uh, had some struggle with, with Villarreal, who of course hung in deep and uh, defended what they could, 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 could do. They always wanted to funnel it through Parejo uh, in the build in, in, in the build play, but the uh, one thing that Villarreal really likes is that the pace of the game is slow. And Liverpool made sure that they are in high, as much high speed as possible, especially coming over Luis Diaz, who uh, really seems to be a brilliant signing at this moment for Liverpool. Uh, but 
it it was a little bit frustrating, especially in the first half. Yes, Liverpool had a few half chances, but it was not uh, the greatest of games. I was also just distracted a little bit by another game, but I'll tell the story, of course, in a separate video. Uh, but you know, I I wasn't fully fo 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 focused, although I had only that game on. But I also have to say, I didn't feel that I missed all that much. However, it changed then very quickly at the beginning of the second half where Liverpool again, okay, let's hit them one more time and with full force as much as we can. And um, the only way, I mean, either you have a brilliant strike, it, it had to be something crazy to actually uh, break Villarreal down. And it happened uh, when a Henderson cross was uh, deflected by Estupinian into his own net. I mean, the goal it cannot look good in the OCA situation because you see how the cross is going and suddenly the ball goes in the complete other direction. Ruli had no chance there. And then uh, I think it was a brilliant goal was, uh, by, by Mane. I mean, the way Salah uh, placed the ball through Pau Torres and then uh, Mane just uh, toe pokes it in uh, in the right moment. The ball had the perfect weight. He couldn't have been played any fraction of a second later because Mane would have been offside. I really thought the way this was built, the way Salah threaded the ball through the defense and the way Mane made the run, an absolutely brilliant goal. Um, I think in the first half uh, it was Thiago who, also, who hit the wall, which was the best chance now that I, re I remember. Um, but then I always had the feeling that uh, Liverpool, they could have made it three, they made it three, I mean offside. Liverpool had many, many offside uh, uh, situations where VRL just really uh, worked together very nicely. Uh, defending them and it was then uh, towards the end of the game and suddenly Villarreal had, a, a, I don't want to say the upper hand, but we were a little bit more uh, going forward because Liverpool in many ways, uh, <laughs> in the 72nd, they, they took uh, four players out, resting them for uh, the, um, uh, the weekend, more, more or less because you had the 2-0 lead and now you just have to manage your um, strengths because you still want to go for the quadruple as I said I don't quite believe in it until I see it but that game it clearly showed that Liverpool is just at another level and this is a Villarreal team that really frustrated uh, Bayern that frustrated Juventus the one thing though I have to have to say I think Villarreal probably would have liked to play the first leg at home and not away from home and I think that played a little bit into it uh, as well because you know with the on crowd although there were many Villarreal fans there uh, with uh, the club organizing the, the flights there uh, it was really nice when there, there was the over you saw a lot of sea of red and there was this one yellow sector this is how it should be in many ways yeah uh, it was a good uh, it, it was a fun game the one thing that uh, came to me also I mean um, Villarreal's nickname is the yellow submarine which is of course a song of, of the Beatles who are of course from Liverpool so it all came full circle as well as the three letter ac acronym for Liverpool is live and Villarreal is the exact opposite will uh, just few random observations that I found those two were kind of made for each other to meet at some point. Uh, if we see now going forward, um, of course, collision course. Liverpool manages it. Liverpool at the moment, 93% favorites to uh, make, make, make the final. Even Manchester City hold a uh, definite advantage. I mean, almost three quarters over Real Madrid. So it is more or less those two that are, we are gonna have another English final. Um, as much as I probably would enjoy Liverpool against the Real Madrid final, kind of a, uh, revenge story for Klopp. Uh, I think we will get a better game with Liverpool and Manchester City are playing. Despite me not won, really wanting an all English final again, because we had uh, <laughs> this would be the third in the past uh, four years. Yes, the third in the past four years, which is not my idea of the Champions League. Champ it just shows you how dominant the Premier League is, but as far as intriguing finals go, I think this could be one for the ages, honestly. So uh, we, we gotta see, maybe Real Madrid can pull an upset, but I'm not holding my breath for that. I think we know who are the two best teams left in the competition. It is very, very clear cut. So yeah, uh, second legs will come uh, next week. We have first we are Liverpool and then uh, Real Madrid Man City that Wednesday. I cannot wait for it.
to be honest. In any case, uh, let me know what you thought about these games. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I'm for, for sure talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel and click the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever anything happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.